Well, Didi, since Gary couldn't be here, why don't you introduce the guest that you brought with you? <laughs> so tonight we announced uh, the last two speakers for the Friday opening party. So I brought one of the of the of the speakers for the Friday night, and that's Martin Ditke. But he's not going to be a speaker for Friday. He's going to do something totally different than than we're used to him. So I'll I'll let him tell you himself. Oi, oi. <laughs> Boy, welcome, Martin. Uh, so glad to have you welcome Martin. Thanks, guys. Blessing to be here. Yeah, something I've always wanted to do, DD. So um, yeah, that will be something that I've been fantasizing about in my head for the last 50 years or something, is stand-up comedy. So uh, yeah, I am um, with the subject matter as well. You can imagine where I'm gonna go. Yeah, that's gonna be epic. I can't wait to do that. So um, yeah, and and the venue as well. It's beautiful. I was looking at it today at DD. That looks very, very, very nice place. So yeah, looking forward to that end of the year. So Thank you me. wrote. It. You're Sorry, doing yeah. a stand up act. Is that what I understood? Sorry. You're doing stand up. Yeah, man. That's gonna be awesome. How long's that your will, set? That will be awesome. I, 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 you know, I usually. Um, you know, humorous anyway with my presentations, but I find like humor helps the pill um, easier. And people remember deeper when they laugh. They, you know, they, when it's depressing and in the double negative or in any way negative, people will always block it and put it at the back of their mind. Any, anything that's linked with anything negative, people will put it at the back of their agenda in their minds. In the, in the, but when it's humor, oh, and that will, they will remember. When they're looking back in their memories, it's like, that really made me laugh. And they'll think, why well, made them laugh? And then, so it works. I think humor is a good way of reaching people, waking people. So, um, yeah, I'll get that if I can. I'm sure I will. Okay. Be happy. Laughter is so disarming, right? Just so disarming, like... you know, to the, the thing about with humor is it's like it, it just, you know, it may as well that all just be in your underpants. It just strips away all everyone's BS, doesn't it? You know, it just, it's just me, it's just you. I don't really give a damn. And I'm just going to say how it is, you know, and, and you will. Yeah, everyone will relate to it. Everyone will. It, you know, it'll be, it'll be something. It'll be something. I just know it. So I think it speaks to. It. So I think it speaks to maybe why people react so violently at first, mm -hmm. because that's how they're going to be able to hold on. If they were be able to look at it openly, it, just imagine if they could accept this with laughter and just get completely disarmed. They'd be so much more open to the information rather than just being automatically defensive. Hmm. I think that it's moved on a bit from that. I think, I, I feel, I hope anyway, the, from these violent attacks and all of that, maybe, you know, since like, you know, the mainstream coverage has been really open and, you know, only two days ago, I posted on my last blog that it was in the BBC press that they were pushing, or this is what they're putting out, regardless of what it's, it's true. But they were saying that, why are YouTube pushing YouTube pushing flatter videos? And um, you know, and basically, so what they're undertoning with is guys, YouTube are actually pushing flatter. Do they believe it is? And listen to this, guys. A girl sent me an email this morning. She she's in America and she tried to access a child benefit. And she had to give a security question. And the security question was, she sent me a, a, a screensaver there. Is the earth flat or is the earth? above and she had to answer yes or no to enter to get her money <laughs> so what's she gonna do lie <laughs> so it's, oh. not joking so the, you know the even for security questions is coming up so i'm wondering if if it is you know the way we always envisioned it as like just a roll out and this is the way it's going to be you know because it's you know getting out of it and we ain't going to shut up so you know I, and it's millions of waking up in, in the you know, the hundred monkey effects, consciousness works that way. You know, you have to be a somebody talking about it and you get infected <laughs> and you're going to get it if you look into it. So, Martin, yeah, you've, you've, it you've, was... you've triggered me there into probably the first rant of the evening. Um, cool. And you said there about that girl's option. Quite clever programming that. Um, and I had to do what's called uh, continuum professional development. Don. An NHS mandate, uh, children's oral health, and I, I had to get, I had to fail the first time because I couldn't answer the questions honestly. When I was given the choice of which is the best piece of advice to give a parent with regards to the six-year-old, 
tell them to stop eating sugary snacks between meals or smear a small amount of their 1,350 parts per million fluoride toothpaste onto their child's toothbrush and brush with that. I obviously went for the former and failed. Um, this is training. Sorry. Given out by the NHS. Never mind surreptitious mind control of oh you've got to you've got to answer subconsciously. Get your money out. Yes. Anyway, sorry, first rant over with guys. Carry on. You did. <laughs> Well, we had the same idea because Saturday and Sunday is going to be the, the real convention and, and the more serious debates and, and speakers. We wanted to have like a fun thing for the Friday night and just have people hang out and laugh together. It's nothing better to do that than have some jokes and then have a drink and spend some time together. So by the time the, the conventions open up, the, a lot of people will know each other by then. So they that's will. the idea. And there's... Just to give you an idea for the Friday, we're opening at, at 7 and Martin will have like a 45 minute uh, a comedy act. Then we have the Globe Light Tour who will tell us about their two weeks they, they've done in Europe already. We have a little open mic session so everybody will have a chance to come on stage and, and talk to whatever they want to talk about. And then the second announcement for today is our DJ who is uh, nothing less than Mark Devlin. He's been on the show before so we're very excited about the Friday. Uh, it's now completely full the friday program so very excited that's awesome and patricia yeah. yeah as well don't forget yeah patricia will be hosting uh, the open mic session for the friday okay wow <laughs> yeah well i'm good at breaking the ice everyone's going to be having they will want no one another by saturday we'll have such a laugh it'll be epic it really will be yeah i can't wait for that 45. i may actually be there martin sorry I may actually be there. I might be uh, living in Croatia at that time. Serious, Zach. Oh, yeah. So I'll be getting a hold of you so we can, uh, I'll be sending you all kinds of pictures. That's damn me. <laughs> well, 45 minutes, that's no joke. That's a long time. That... <laughs> not in my time. That's not. I could go on for like literally hours. People have to shut me up. Terrible. Uh, you'd just be warming up, Rob, won't you, by then? Getting a feel for the audience. Yeah. Give me, give me, another, just, just give me another half hour. Well, Martin, I look you know what it, the most important, you know what the most important thing about comedy is, right? Go on, hit me up. I think he just hung. Timing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't even worry about timing. Uh, I'm, just blow and the timing comes natural. That's so a pregnant like a pause. <laughs> I like, I love the way, I knew what Josh is doing, and mm. I love the way that John cracked. He cracked <laughs> every <laughs> time. It is about it's just like playing chicken. Yeah, watch Step 2 and then you'll find that out. It's all about timing. Well, we had uh, we had you doing a presentation in Birmingham last year, and there was a lot of laughing uh, in that one already. And that wasn't even a comedy show, so no, I didn't mean to, but everyone was in statics. It was funny, yeah. It was really he, he was <laughs> showing pictures of space missions yeah. <laughs> and banana, <Earth>. yeah, <laughs> just in case there's any confusion, <laughs> yeah. Uh... Oh well. So you all, you also slipped in there, DD. That have we got have we got a DJ, like <laughs> proper DJ. We've got a proper DJ, yeah, and uh, he's a flat earther as well. He's uh, he's doing a lot of uh, he's wrote two books about uh, the music industry and frequency and vibration. So very interesting. Yeah, we had we had him on here, Mark Devlin, hey. Adam. Mark Devlin. Hello, is he um? Yeah, yeah. he came out. Paradise is it? Was Paradise? I think about the North Pole channel going on. Is that him? No. No. Um, Mark was really oh. into the 432 frequencies. Oh, he right, got in cool. some of the Fall McCartney. Uh, hmm. Crap. It was right on the tip of my tongue, too. The name of his book is Music. Oh, God. Man, I feel horrible. I know. 
I'll do it with the timing then. Musical Truth. Musical Truth, Volume 1 and 2. Oh, I love that. That's right. <laughs> Nicely done, Mr. Savage. Yeah, he will do a special set on the Friday evening to close down the party. And you can find a, a little bit of his set on the website, uh, epiconvention.com. You can find all his information. Listen in a little bit. It's going to be awesome. Oh. And he's got two volumes of musical truth out there, one and two, so. Past the dirty pan, the left hand side. Hey, give me a little music, make me jump and jive. <laughs> I remember it well, that little kid in it, one of the singer. They were all well, sort of kids, weren't they? Yeah, I was in high school when that was out. I'm yeah. so glad you did that, Martin. It was bursting in my head off. I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> Come to see me, make me rub band scrub. Bang, 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 bing, 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 that sort of thing. <laughs> I was there, brother. Oh. What? That's <laughs> not staring at me. <laughs> I just had a think in my mind, so I had to write it down, just in case it disappeared. There, staying on. Yeah, we've got Gary knocking on the door. Yeah. <laughs> knocking. knocking on our door. He's from here, he is. Do you know, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Dave Edmonds? Mm -hmm. Born two streets away, by the way. Really? Yeah, he's Pyro Boy. He's from here. He was uh, part of Rock Pile with, um, what's his name? Uh, oh. He went into, I love the sound of breaking glass. Is it low? Oh, I'm not Especially sure. I've, heard, I've only heard that song in one place, and that was in the movie uh, Little Monsters. Yeah. I love the sound of breaking glass. Yeah, that was my favorite part of the movie. They're yeah, playing so baseball. Classic, on the classic up song. Rock that was. It was a spin off from Dave Edmonds years later. Like, they've done a little, it's like a little super group at the time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, from here. He used to play in the pub when uh, when he was young, just in the local pub shit before he got found. Went to America. I hear so, you knocking. <laughs> America. Go back where you been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. Then it was used for years on the on the peas adverts in the UK, you know. <laughs> the peas. Did he get royalties from that? Yeah. He's in the pods, isn't it? And you'd have peas trying to get in. They say, We hear you knocking, but you're not fresh enough uh, to get in. You know, so. uh, Rabbit. <clears throat> Amazing how much money you can make off of a few words you put in the right order with the right musical tones behind it. You heard the words to Mud Men, Pink Floyd. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Mud. Listen to it today just to see if it did. What album? Actually, not what, what album? album. No, yeah. not actually, but it is from um, Sid Barrett days, so it's not meant to make sense, I don't suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Which a Which album is that off of? Sorry? Is Walt all right? Because he's, is he there? Because you're talking music and he's not so I, I'm actually yeah. having issues. I'm behind Walt, the scenes trying to do some title stuff and it's caused my computer to, I've been having computer problems all week. It's been going downhill by degrees. So I, I'm definitely listening, but I'm just lost in technical difficulties behind the scenes here. My apologies. Well, the good news is, Walt, your microphone stand is working epic. Isn't it? <laughs> That's all it costs. That's all I need. Then, as long as you can do the show, I'm here just pushing buttons. <laughs> Gotta have a trippy mic, man. Ask, ask I Adam. actually don't know Mud Man by Pink Floyd. I was thinking the same thing that uh, he asked you. What album is that from? Um. Ooh. It must I be early. Mother, is there? Must be. It must be. It must be early stuff. Uh, it be, I, I, it on, I think it might be. No, no, it's not. It's on. Uh, it's it's on Echoes. I'm sure it is. It's on. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Good. Metal. Yeah. yeah. I think. <laughs> Trying to go through a, a Pink Floyd catalog in my mind now. Wow. So, Dee Dee, do you want to give us a rundown on the guests so far that you've got? Yeah. Well, well, then two ro old rockers rock on. My right. Hey, Great. Hey, what? My boy is so getting into rock now, mate. That's it. He's got this, 
got this electric guitar that he's seen once birthday got his old one now the past the whole week of half term come on really well honestly Serious. yeah yeah gonna have to get a little play session for walt to uh, give him a judgment I I'm, I'm ready to jam whenever he's ready man let yeah. me know get it on get it on yeah. honestly he's, he's come on so much he's just it's funny isn't it they put a playstation or an xbox down and uh i tell you what they've learned he's got some finger control from that xbox because they do tunes well he's got some skills to get in there anyway so uh sorry i i i wandered into the only bit of musical knowledge i have which is me too i'm terrible <laughs> <laughs> that and musical youth i pop plastic don't worry <laughs> not off mate uh, so yeah dd let's let's come up we've got martin um <laughs> i think yep. we can tell hey martin are we allowed heckling are we out are, are we allowed a bit of heckling of the uh... oh my god yeah i should hope so wow heckle me yes please i'm gonna get some <laughs> panties lined up and throw them yeah it's throw you under everything he's amsterdam that's what i'm hoping so <laughs> i'll throw you a biff through halfway through <laughs> no my clothes are staying off i don't do that stripping lack anymore i had to give that up years ago i used to do um kissograms when i was younger and then uh, one night i had to go to a stag do dressed as a red indian so basically all i was dressed in was a, a chamois leather and a pair of sandals and this was in february it was freezing cold and when I went in there, um, I was assaulted by women, and it wasn't very nice. I can tell you, the women are not very nice. So I ended up running down the middle of this road, <laughs> this really long road, with just um, a pair of sandals on and a chamois leather, it was so naked, um, for like ages and ages, just running away from this pub to get away from these women. It was awful. So I never went back. It was good money, but I never did it again, because they were disgusting, the rapists. Shame a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a mad in true story from my youth. I'm just picturing it now, pal. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go as the policeman. I said, can I go as the cop? Or what about the sailor, the pilot? No, they wanted me as the Indian because my skin tone. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Was he racist? Yeah, they were racist. <laughs> it's really Brazilian. I went, the interview was amazing. Um, she was a Brazilian, the woman that done the interviews. And um, the interview was basically take your clothes off and stand there. It's like, she's really, really cheesy, isn't it? She's like, is this like the porn industry or something I've inadvertently walked into? Seems a reasonable, <laughs> so, but it seems wasn't. a it was reasonable really, interview for a stripper. Really well done and very, very nice and proper money. It was really well done. It was like the house was a manor. You know? She was like on a big desk, big wooden desk. It was really proper. So, uh, yeah, that went down like rubbish. I didn't, I mean, done two. Did you just come in and take all your clothes off and eat no, this? Man, no, no, no. I, I, I had a flat about a mile away. So I got dressed in my flat and then I just turned up like if I should wear a coat down there and just running. So I got in there, went in the pub and I had to do the business with this girl. And it's like about a hundred of her stag do birds with her. Um, and they were all like middle aged, like, like very large women, is all I can say. Um, and they were from Cardiff. I don't know if you know about that. And um <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. Oh pull me, pull me. Oh. Taking you back, huh? <laughs> I'm broke out in a sweat. <laughs> the funniest part is how funny you find it. <laughs> I'm not sure the counselling is working, uh, Martin. No. <laughs> awesome. well, I put a fragile mind. I'm scared from that. I was. A rude I, I think I think that, that it's it's a it's a memory of regret of not letting them catch you. No, mate, it was horrible. You you wouldn't have <laughs> them. All your wildest fantasies are just illusions. The reality is quite something else. <laughs> That's uh, of all the exclusives I hope for today, the stuff we talk in pre-show. That was, <laughs> that was, yeah, it's just like this, isn't it? It was along that level, yeah. <laughs> Last pal. <laughs> you started it. Um, I'll blame Josh. <laughs> Josh, your fault. Yes, dear. Sorry, dear. 
DD, please save us. Tell us, tell us about the conference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for uh, we the, the conference is going to take place the uh, 27th until the 29th, as somebody asked. It's uh, 27th to 29th of September this year. So we start on the Friday evening with a little opening party, and we'll have Martin Lietke there doing some comedy. We have the Globe Light Tour team. They will talk about their, uh, their adventures. We have Patricia Steer hosting the open mic session, and we have Mark Devlin as our DJ. And for the Saturday, we're going to have a, a debate day. And the first debater has been announced. And that was uh, Nathan Oakley. He's going to be the, the flat earth side, of cool. course. Uh, the other debaters will be announced later this year. For the Sunday, we have uh, speakers. And so far, we have Iru Landucci, uh, Roxanne, the Globe Light Denier. And we have Charinism. Wow. Almost so, all the Globe Busters. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah, I think that will want it. I see we've got more guy in the chat. Hi, guy. I gotta say, speaking of Globusters, we've got Bob, we've got the John the Moore guy. Big shout out to them. Oh, and John, give Mina our best as well. My ex wife's name is Mina, spelled differently, but yeah. I still have to force it out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I try to wish your wife well in the hopes that I can learn to better wish my ex-wife well. Maybe. And I don't know if it's belated. It may be today, but happy birthday, John. I know. It's still today. It came up on my Facebook. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hope yeah. you had a great day, man. Make it yours. <laughs> Isn't this where Savage sings happy birthday? I don't do birthdays. Yeah, I hope he's not 33. <laughs> I'd, I'd take being 30. I'd take the ridicule of 33 just to be it again. Mine. <laughs> I went from 32 to 34. It was really weird. <laughs> I'm turning 33 this summer. So oh, stop it. it. <laughs> <laughs> we all got to go through it at some stage. You know, just Shout out to Karen Bean. Shout out to Ace McLeod. This one's for you. <laughs> so, I've heard I've heard a lot of names mentioned dude, in that thing. Any any guests? <laughs> yeah, we have a couple of people we invited. So first of all, we know? <laughs> what we did is we invited all the speakers from uh, the last year's uh, convention in Birmingham because we all uh, we all had some help from them. So we invited all of them, but unfortunately. Uh, there's only a couple coming. So, so far we've announced uh, uh, Robbie Davidson from the US. He will come to Amsterdam just as wow. he did in, uh, in the Birmingham con convention. Oh, I like Robbie. Very supportive. So also Robin Campbell, the organizer from the UK convention, which will take place 13 to 15 of September this year. He will come to Amsterdam as well. And we're going to the UK, of course. So we're all supporting each other. And then last but not least so far, we have, of course, uh, the Iron Realm media guy with his giant stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I want every one of us to be introduced from now on, uh, for the record. That's, <laughs> I get in the club, got to have a giant stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a museum piece in the future, Adam, in a, in a case of its own. I uh, can you imagine? What of the memorabilia from future Adam's cult? Adam's mic, it'll say. <laughs> They're coming thousands. You know they will. I can't wait to see the cheap Chinese rip-offs. <laughs> yeah, go to the Smithsonian for that. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a lot more names coming out, so every two weeks we will uh, announce more and more until September, which is not that far away, actually. As you can tell, I'm excited, Didi. I can't wait. Um, oh, it's going to kill me. It's ages, really. But, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it, mate. And um, <laughs> just keep busy in the summer. And I'll just I'll arrange meets. There'll be other meets. I think we got the globe light tour, and then it'll be that. Um, so it can be busy here. There'll be won't even have time to waste and think about it, item because we will not allow this. <laughs> yeah, oh. September is going to be a very busy month in Europe. Yeah, it will be mental, won't it? Conventions and the tour. So you best get some sleep now because you're not going to sleep then. No. Don't sleep. No one sleeps in Amsterdam. <laughs>
Right, well, go, well, go on, Dede. Do you want to give it? I was going to say, do you want to give it uh, the uh, details? Another shout out for those who's dafting up. Got a ticket yet? I just wanted to say that the convention ends on the Sunday, the 29th, but uh, the Global Eye Tour will continue and they will hit Amsterdam on uh, Monday, so the 30th. So, and people, if, if they want to continue, they can they can join the tour and, and keep going because it's not ending just yet then. Hmm. Uh, some practical info is you can find almost everything on our website, which is uh, feconvention.com. We also have a Facebook group and a Twitter group, and it's all called FE Convention or Plattered Convention. Uh, and we've already got the link over here somewhere in the linky links. I know I'll stick it on the top here in a second. Yeah, you can buy the tickets on our website. They cost about 55 euros for a day ticket or 105 for, uh, for the weekend. And the weekend is Friday to Sunday. The day tickets are only uh, Saturday and Sunday. If you want to come to the party, uh, you will have to buy a combi, then it's included. Or hopefully, if there's room left, you can buy at the door. But the Friday will be in a smaller venue, so we are very limited on space. And for the big venue, we are uh, in the big theater room. You, you can find uh, the address and the places on the website, but it's, it's practically all within 10 minutes of the central station in Amsterdam. So we will be close in the city. If you want to do some activism, you can go to the train station or the city as well. Uh, but for the convention itself, because we are doing the convention in the venue in the public library of Amsterdam, which is the biggest library of Europe, by the way, it has five floors of books and cars. So Martin, you will have a blast there. That's that was a question I was I did have because of the venue. Um, Martin, have you got plans chilling out later? Because I, I when Dee Dee showed me the venue, thought outside of the venue arena, which is just bloody awesome, just the fact that it's at the National Library just gives you the chance. Yeah, no, I've to... seen it's just amazing. Yeah, no, I'll just I'll be uh, absorbing the culture uh, with my camera. Uh, Medical crazy, I should imagine, and photographing just about anything that is old, I should imagine. I shall be viewing the uh, station with different eyes from the last time. Well, I go all, all on a dime rack. I go all on a photograph all them buildings, mate. I just need to get down by Amstel Church again. I had a, um, an experience on Amstel Bridge when I was 18. It was a very, very unusual experience. <laughs> no, I did. I did. I a very unusual experience. Uh, a flashback, if you like. It was very unusual. I can't go into it here. It's just so, a lot of people have unusual experiences in Amsterdam, so it just made me chuckle. Um, <laughs> I've had millions of very unusual experiences in Amsterdam. <laughs> I've had them all. I'm not even going to go into detail here. But um, yeah, that, that particular, I was only a kid. But, um, I was walking across uh, the bridge itself and I saw like, I had this like massive feeling of deja vu. And it's like, Christ, I've been here before, haven't I? And then I had this sort of, you know, when you hear these like things in the back in the distance, I heard like matching boots. I was like, what? And I look around quick like that, you know, like if there's a load of mass soldiers, are they on pr parade today in Amsterdam? Um, and I like almost thought, I think I, you know, in my mind, I think that I caught a vision of like people or men marching across this bridge. And then he just like instant gone and back and here. I mean, Amsterdam, and only I'm just turning 18. And, um, just a kid really but uh yeah it was a really unusual thing on that bridge stuck in my mind the, my whole life you know it was only split second as well it was overpowering deja vu that i had been on that bridge before in that bit spot as well where i was as well exactly same spot same view same building same surroundings it's really really peculiar. Yeah. psychic experience another i have many can you see this picture martin yes that was out in the middle of a national forest it's seen right on the water. Uh, it looks like it's um, cast, though. You know, it's obviously it looks like a machine. It's an antique tech device. It's got a small dome. It looks like there's more underneath, but is that ancient? Because um, it looks like precast. Where the yellow thing was, there was a statue. Yeah. Of oh, I forget the guy's name. The National Forest is named after him. I I can't remember the name of the place now, for the life of me. But at the top. What are on the cliffs? Are they, are they native? Are they um, like Mesoamerican, like sort of Mayan or something? Because I suppose they, yeah, that's what they. That's what we're told. 
Yeah. Why? But at the top, it was a dove upside down with a Swiss cross, it looked like. That would make and sense. I couldn't tell what was underneath it. And then to the right, where that big other stone is, there was two different pictures on each side. I should have got pictures for Was you. the dove flying down by any chance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it would be. Because you, what you're looking uh, at there is an impression of the EM model. And the dove flying in is a dove, or the EM, or the, or, the, or the Northern Lights, if you like, going into the North Pole hole. It's what they put on the EM model. They put it all, stamp it all over their reality. And the dove flying in is it. And if you get it with, like, a, a Maltese cross or any one of their symbols, it's on them all. It's all of them. All of the fakes as well. Christianity. You see that, you see that in a lot of um, cathedrals and stuff in their stained glass windows is the yeah. dove flying down, usually on fire or something, wasn't it? Dean yeah. Odell's um, part of his, uh, I don't know what it's called, logo. Um, it's also part, it was on the OTO as well, the Auto Templar. Mm. Well, it's analogous for the Taurus coming back in on itself anyway that's what it means that's, it's in all over the reality of this EM model and that this death is part of the code it's a controller code people think it's something to do with nowhere and the, you know the dove going out but that's not what it displays you always see it flying down downwards and it's always into the center part of the cross where the inertia black plane is that's what you always see on every one of these depictions in churches as well. And it's the, um, uh, the Jesuits got it in their symbols as well, some of them, on their eight-pointed star as well. Who is that? Uh, something of 300, isn't it? Garter of 300 have the eight-pointed star. Is there one of their logos? Yeah, that's it. But with the center as well, the center part, which you've got a zero inside, uh, it's used, it's basically the temple of X system. And it's, it's on their, uh, you know, their logo as well as the Catholics or every, all of them, every one of them. There's, there's no one I haven't come across that doesn't, I can't even believe now where I'm seeing it in the day. You know, it's like, really, really? It's everywhere. They can't help themselves. They just had Dubas delight all this time. And it goes way back. I see these depictions of this model as far back as, I don't know, Mathemonte. They got the four corners. They got the four portals or the four angels, what you call them. You know, on the four angles and four, you know, the square and stationary map of Earth. You know this, the um, Orlando map, um, where you get angels on the corners. You get this in, um, I suppose, Enoch as well. But these four angels, these angels, we think in are magnets or um, north and south um, opposing magnets or two opposing toruses, which drive the luminaries around to the center, which is also a, a double-sided magnet, but a pyramid, and then back up again. And it works perfectly. And we're starting to think it overlaps into something like neighboring ponds, which also got the same center bit as us, as in Mount Meru, and the same Ten vortex system with the same angels, which are barrels, each and every one, and it actually it just makes a flower of life as well. So I think it's extended out as that as well. So <clears throat> outwardly, so there's a lot more going on. I think it's three dimensional. I think we're in this somewhere. So I think that's what's going on, and that's what they're showing us with that. So that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So repeating quadrants is the the magnetic corners of the points on the flower of life i caught that the other night and i was i've been struggling i've always struggled to say understand fully what that that's got to be right it has to be round i'm going to be circular it can be hexagonal it can look like a honeycomb and, and i think you know i'm sort of suggest i think i'm feeling towards that because i'm not saying like the atomic world is a reality but if it is like um, you know outwardly projected outwardly and we're looking at Tauruses, which are in fact atoms with the North and South Pole and inertia plane between, right? Well, the, they, the bondings look very similar to the four angels, the bonding points that hold each of these, you know, and they're expanded out. And they look like, you know, this hexagonal honeycomb shape out. And, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, we're just in that. You know, it hasn't got to be round. You know, I don't know if it's square. It can be anything, really. You know, I don't know why we think these certain shapes. It's, well, this is infinite possibility. Adam, oh. your audio is shocking. Hmm. Anyway, that's what I was thinking just now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, it's just you got fans in the background or something, and it comes on when you unmute. Weren't you supposed to download the new OBS to get that expander? Wow, that's true. I, I said after the weekend, I weren't touching out <laughs> just before Friday, but I will look at it. It's because the headset's blown up, isn't it? Yeah, I thought that was last week, so. Oh, it's gone. I'm on, I'm on a crusty old mic uh, and an a old school headset, so no USB. I'll mute. Do it, John. Do it. Oh, you broke it, Dad. Ah. I was letting it go. <laughs> Just so I can see the <laughs> no, you need some tumbleweed moments this game, you guys. Done. Yeah. We're only, we're only fucking with Savage. Don't worry. <laughs> Why can't you do But he just game. I think I'm fucking with your back, mate. Yeah. He uh, did. You were hardcore there, John. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Right. Well, we've got a moment, guys. Rocks, Rock Sands. I think. Hey, Gary. I don't see him in there. I don't see him in here. I may be wrong. I let him in. He's getting yeah, the timing know. right. <laughs> I've got. I He's there. He's just got a, a suspenseful, pregnant pause before he says hello. You see, <laughs> see it works a treat. Amazing this stuff. I wish I knew about this earlier. He's, he's gone down, hasn't he, to the John D experiment. Um, let me share my screen. Sam sent me some uh, little videos, which I assume look like... Um... That's going down tonight, isn't it? Uh, Brighton oh. and... Where, where was the other place? Brighton and... Yeah. yeah but... Worthing. Worthing. Thank you. Mm. I hate That's it when I you do that to me. <laughs> it's the 22nd of Feb. I'm meant to be, we were meant to be meeting in Italy today. All right. <laughs> it never would have happened, by the way. Well, no, I mean, not because it <laughs> never would have happened, but this ah. was an absolute nightmare. Audience slip. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll dig you out a hole. Um, so Roxanne sent us this stuff. I, I'm going to just play it. I've not had a chance to see it. it. Looks like stuff from the beach. So share it to Zoom. And it's already been sent in Gary Vision, not the camera being held that way around. It is, John. All right, let's give it a go. Or oh, wait I'll there. Look at Zoom then, haven't I? Uh, wait there, because I've not shared. Wait. You got to do something with the uh, grid a little differently. It's showing over the grid, uh, the grid showing over the video. One of these times we have to have Roxanne just sitting there smoking a spliff for Josh. <laughs> no one's ever asked me to do that. <laughs> right, I'm pressing play. Oh, that was good. That was real good. You could probably kill the volume just a hair too. <laughs> Maybe. And you're still you're still hiding half okay, the Okay, so the, the conditions oh. were less than favorable to say the least. We did see the lights a few times. Um, we got them on camera, but we it was not ample conditions, so we're gonna wrap it up for this evening and come back down tomorrow morning. Cynthia and Ruben are here, Lee Earl's here, Dave Marsh is here, Gary's up there with the guys that we had the film crew. Okay. Good turnout. Looks like they've hit the pub. <laughs> oh hello, little bit of vid. Let's go to the pub. <laughs> He's just stamping the serviettes. Good lad. (laughs) 
Well, that's something. <laughs> but if there's anything else other than pub shots, I think that's your lot, guys. But I thought I'd share that with you. So I did, um, start Roxanne. again tomorrow, by the sounds of it, on the experiment. That's you guys, before I forget, can I uh, mention something? Is it March 15th, John? Yes, mate. Gibbous Moon? At noon? Um, I can't remember if it's at noon or midnight. I think it's I present at it's midnight. <laughs> Is it midnight? Okay. I'll, I'll, well, have, I'll let you know in a minute. But March 15th. I just want to let everybody know while we have... I'm not even sure how many people we have watching. March 15th. That's the Ides of March. Well, it Adam, is. isn't that the Friday that Bob's going to come on from Globebusters? I, I did politely ask him, didn't I? Well, I was standing below Busters. Well, he's in chat. Bob, are you coming on? Are you and Cammy coming on? Um, We need Cammy's moon brain on to contribute to the moon night. I think it'd be a good a good night, I think. It's if we can chat all things moon. Um, and I'd love to chat a bit of Celestine as well as the phasers. And <coughs> moving on from Bob's obvious obvious acceptance i mean who wouldn't want to come on not me but it says yes in chat yes we go. will be coming on irm so now we need to get a little 70s intro it's the no dells <laughs> <laughs> cool. bob and cammy back to back looking disapprovingly <laughs> you were right zach it was uh gibbous moon at midday Oh, that IRM. So, I was... Shout out for everybody to look for the Gibbous Moon. The... Well, it won't be during the day in the States. Uh, well, I mean, it won't be at midday during the state, uh, at the, in the States. On that note, John, I was chatting with Anthony Riley in the week and explaining it to him. Um, I think he gets it, um, but he's headed off to the ballers to gather a load of uh, give it to them basically and last i heard that geo streber is trying to model it um and you'd have thought it'd come back pretty quick but it's been three or four days now um and no reply so. riley i heard him talking about it i yeah. don't know who geo streber is is who's he he's this guy with a youtube channel I mean, is he a baller or is he a yeah, flat earther? Yeah. Or? I think he's a German chemist or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a baller and he's trying to model it, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Got to see this. Well, that's what Mick West suggested we do on our video that we posted. No, he suggested something else, didn't he? Oh, we well, a yeah, scale model true. of the universe. A scale model of the solar system or something, yeah. There you go. Maybe it was just the solar system of the entire universe. That could be. Because <laughs> that could take some time. Well, I've been asking for for just a three-circle picture for, you know, nearly four years now. So I, I'd love to see it rendered oh. in 3D on... So, I think it's better than that, mate. It's going to be uh, Bosbron Dirk Technik, mate. It's going to be done with German engineering, so... <laughs> Sweet. Why it comes out. I'd love to see a, a flat earther model it as well and um, see what comes back. Though I don't really know how you can beat real life models of uh, revolving around with a polystyrene ball and, you know, Walt style and uh, a light like marshmallow. Or the marshmallow, of course, yeah. It doesn't, won't be a marshmallow, doesn't take mate. CAD to model this in the slightest, but um, yeah, let's see what they uh, come back with. Well, guys, we're coming up to the first hour, aren't we? And we'd planned this evening to try and do three one hour shows. Um, so before we start around, Martin. Give us one last bombshell before you go, because there was there was a couple. And uh, where are we up to? I know you're absolutely smashing it. 
in terms of yeah, things are a little bit busy. <laughs> yeah, um, you were talking, you were talking a little bit in pre-show, weren't you? About yeah, yeah. This for me, what I thought was yeah. really significant to the paradigm. With yeah, all I think it given. might be actually. It's just really weird how this has fallen into place. And um, you know, I, I literally this was the words that was going through my mind. No, th this can't be happening. This cannot be. And the next thing that I thought, did this happen? And bam, then it was there. I'd be like, oh, God, what have I stumbled into, is what I thought. Now, the scenario is, the history that we believe, <laughs> they believe, is that we were populating America through the 1600s, 1500s, and 1700s, OK? Now, there doesn't seem to be the amount of people necessary to build this colonial world that's populated in America. Now, I've been studying or looking into um, New Brunswick area and Newfoundland um, because of, basically I'm just, I know there's a link to Tataria and I can see that this place has suffered too many events and these buildings are far too big, far too old to be in this place, which is so far off. You know, the River St. Lawrence freezes over every year. It's just, when are they building all this? It's just, so I've been really digging into this place. And then today um, a link came my way and said, look, look into this. And the official narrative is, is they weren't actually, this is just mind blowing. They weren't actually populating America from Europe. It was the other way around. They were shipping people out of America to Europe. Oh, I don't even know where, because the Arab just goes across the Atlantic. We don't get to see where they go. So what sort of volumes of people are we talking about? People should be there, the amounts of volumes of people. So the people of Arcadia, which is New Brunswick, um, Newfoundland, and this whole northern bit of Canada to Quebec, okay? And the Quebec national flag has got, like, looks like Tataria, and we know through people I've been talking to in Canada, that there's a definite link, 100%, okay? Now, turns out that the Acadians, there was a thing in the official analogy called the expulsion and, and genocide of the Acadians. Now, I don't know who exactly where their origins are from. They speak an unusual dialect of French. It's like, it's like the Louisiana version. Um, so between 1755 and 1762, they ship out tens of thousands and that's in the official narrative of these people to out of you out of america we're supposed to be filling america up and then it's the other way around they're bringing them out of america which to my calculations just is saying that it's the other way around guys that america is the older world not the new world and that was there already i think it's been subject to events and that much to the world but it's there already when you look into it they got a port Port Royal events that I, I dug into in uh, Kingston. I, I don't know how it can be the richest port on earth. They're wiped off the face of the earth with a really high sus highly suspect event outside of Kingston in Jamaica. The survivors are shipped to Newfoundland. What? From Jamaica. And then these people, right, in um, Newfoundland are shipped out to God knows where. Now, what else is in Newfoundland as well is the money pit. The money pit. Now, it occurred to me only this afternoon that in the money pit, this pit that goes infinitely deep to attribute to the Knights Templar, it's not, it's not. But the fact still remains, it's lined with coconut husks. Now, coconuts do not grow in Nova Scotia. The nearest is probably Florida way, or a lot further south anyway. So there's some connection there, and I think it might be something to do with these people of Port Royal. And it is definite Phoenician links, all of it. The, they changed the name of the capital of Arcadia, guys, to Anionopolis. You know, the Phoenician capital is Heliopolis and everything with Helio attached, right? With the Baal faith, which they're practicing now, the globe worshippers, without even knowing. And the capital, they turned into Anionopolis. Oh, I can't even spill out what's happening here too much. You know, this is like real time. So I can actually, I'm dating this takeover now, guys, of the Phoenicians moving in on the Tatarians to between 1755 and 1762 in the Americas. And that's what's to date alone. And it goes deeper as well. There's so much more of this. This wipe out this town, Gage Town, in New Brunswick, the entire population. Um, it's in the official narrative, guys. They were genocided. And um, thousands and thousands of people, uh, they, they talk about it in the official narrative. What's the unofficial narrative, guys? If that's the official one, 
I just can't believe I stumbled upon that. So that's going to be what I'm going to be looking into. <laughs> but guys, they're shipping them out en masse when they're supposed to be shipping them into America. And it's even in that in the official narrative. It's just mad stuff. Tens of thousands that shouldn't even be populated with that amount, you know, for the time. You know, St. John's was supposed to be in the 1800s, 2,000 2, people, and they're shipping out tens of thousands. And where are often the trains going? They're stopping off there to, to by mass. It's just so, so, so the guys. I see why I see where this is our favorite. I think when you start to view stuff and you have not some of the facts necessarily, but some of the, the different ways of viewing some of the ways history is painted, it does make a lot more sense. I mean, you're, you're throwing out there something which really does contradict, uh, contradict the paradigm. But uh, for me, it starts to explain a lot of things because it's all... It, it, it does seem very odd to try and stock civilizations from totally from foundlings. Um, and so to be able to move populations and redefine seems a, a good way of starting stuff um, and then stock with what we're seeing later down the line and fill these cities. And it also seems a, a very efficient way of destroying civilizations and memories. Um, the bit for me just seems very controlled, Martin. It, it seems like if this stuff's going off and we've not seen it before and there is no uh, uh, real historical narrative to put it into, it does demonstrate that there really is a whole complete different history that's completely hidden from us and has been overmasked with like you say, put simply, Christopher Columbus and the eradication of uh, Native Americans. And even then to lie you false narratives as well, I've noticed, you know, for people to follow if they don't believe that. And they're also false. You know, the, uh, you know they, they reverse everything, these, uh, these, this mindset, this Phoenician mindset. It makes perfect sense for the old world to actually, you know, for the new world to actually be the old world. You know, and there's evidence of it in there anyway. You know, you can see glyphs across the landscape of street grids that just cut, you know, I had sent only a day or two ago. Colorado is just out in the wilderness, in, the, in nowhere, perfect street grids. You know, and these petroglyphs are not like laid down in modern times. These ancient cities, vast, vast civilization. You know, how long ago? What happened to them? And this is the facts which are coming up. <laughs> mind-blowing stuff guys it's fascinating stuff mate fascinating i never would have thought i would have said two years ago that like you know the history of america is you know this <laughs> you know it's just uh, so much richer while well, they rob people of um, this rich culture and this rich heritage and what we were you know this in human nature society holistic you know caring for one another and they just put poison into humanity man I mean, everyone's greedy and chasing fucking pointless dreams, superficial dreams, and everyone's chasing that same bullshit dream. And it's a, got everyone on that ride, guys. So that's what we do, bring them back. <laughs> but yeah, imagine that time, guys, while they took us away from that. Rob, so Rob, so got to get back. Back to Mother Nature. Rant, rant over. <laughs> I think. We've got Gary with us and somebody. Oh, you there, Gary? Has he gone again? No, I'm here, guys. So ah, you... there you are. Loud and clear. Oh, that's good. I um I was uh, listening in a little while ago, but I was being interviewed at the same time by um some documentary uh, makers and I was trying to listen in and they were asking me questions. And I thought, oh, this is hard. Uh, yeah. I didn't imagine you there earlier then, that's cool. Give us an update then, dude, because we're, we're going to round off with um, the most recent uh, production by DD for a promo for the conference. But what's happened this evening, which has kept you away, mate? You've been down with John D, is that right? Yes, yeah, it was uh, foggy, unfortunately, but we're gonna, I'm 90% I'm certain I'm going to go back there tomorrow, but there's uh, going to be Roxanne, Dave Marsh, and um, Lee. 
and um, yeah, Dr. John and Ruben and his uh, his um, his girlfriend are there as well. We saw you all in the pub. Roxanne sent you us. You saw us in the pub, did you? Yeah, we we aired the pictures. Don't don't think you can't pretend you just piled. You've driven all that way for a pint. <laughs> yeah, long way to go, and then took a took a little do documentary team with us as well. Well, I did. So um, yeah, they got um, they they're quite interested in getting involved as well. Well, Dee Dee, then you want to uh, give us a last shout out? I will get the video lined up, guys. Anyone else got out to say? Or I, uh, I'm talking and trying to concentrate for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job, Adam. Yeah, I'm Keep it up. over to you, sir. <laughs> well, the most important thing to know is that every two weeks we will announce uh, more speakers and more information. So we will be back in two weeks to give you the, the newest speaker. But for today, we are very excited to have Martin uh, coming to answer them and join us to bring some smiles with everybody and of course Mark being our DJ. You can find all the information on epiconvention.com and we're just excited. Uh, can't wait for September because it's a very busy month with the tours and the two conventions so everybody get to Europe and, and have some fun with us. Awesome. Thank you so much. I wish I could be there. Never say never. Josh, mate, we can... I like that, DD. I love that too. <laughs> and Gary, thank you for being able to pop on and give us a quick little update. We appreciate you uh, giving us a little bit of time. And if ever you need to tell your documentary friends to just shut up for a minute so you can listen to some Iron Realm Media, feel free. I'm sure they would understand. And if not, you could absolutely explain it to them. Well, 